All right, another quiet day in the markets, um, but not a quiet day in terms of um, milestones, right? We're almost, we came a, within a pretty much literally a hair of getting to 5,000 uh, on the S&P 500. So we'll talk about the significance of that and what kind of move we've been getting to get there versus the kind of move the markets have had to get to this prior milestones. Uh, this one being a little bit bigger of a milestone, kind of that midway point to 10,000. Uh, big round number, uh, the parabolic move. I'm going to kind of show you again and the other ways to look at the parabolic move we've been getting in. I, I really dove into detail on that in our technical analysis class for our premium subscribers today. So those of you who are premium subscribers watching this, make sure you check out that recording that's already posted there uh, on the calendar. For those who are not subscribers, uh, you might want to check that out. Uh, check us out so you can be able to see that. But a pretty decent parabolic move getting uh, to that peak. Um, the question, of course, is, okay, now that we're almost there, most likely we'll get there tomorrow, at least on an intraday basis, we'll get there tomorrow. Now what, right? Now what do we want to see? Or uh, There's some seasonal forces uh, at work here. We're going to check those out. I'm going to show you um, the rotation, the sector rotation that's going on right now, which is a little telling. And then our trade idea is a stock that's kind of breaking out itself um, to the upside. Uh, so we'll talk about how to trade that in light of what we're seeing uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Today is Wednesday, February the 7th, 2024. This is the Market Outlook from MarketScholars.com. My name is David Settle. All right, before we get going too far, I invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel with this icon here, the red subscribe button down below. Click the thumbs up icon to like our video. Comment on anything that stood out to you today. Join our website at MarketScholars.com for free. Follow, and like, follow me on Twitter for more content between the videos and join our Market Outlook Facebook group that we've created. All right, if you're watching us here on our blog, check out some of these other things over here on the right, including our Market Outlook Live video where I do, I take a look at all of the Market Outlook trades that we've done to see whether we should stay in them or get out of them. Come down to the bottom, click this heart. It opens up this tab and hit, and hit that like button there where that pops up eventually, there we go. Also, same thing here, click this uh, thumbs up icon. It opens up this tab and uh, same thing, click that like button there as well. Again, thank you to those who have done that uh, yesterday, last night. Our goal is to get to 100. Uh, it's a big deal for us because that, that pushes our content out to all of our followers on those platforms. That's how those work. That's why we always ask for it. So again, thank you to those who click this day in and day out. Those who don't, you can do it right now while you're watching with one or two really easy clicks. All right, let's start off taking a look at the S&P 500 with the market forecast indicator. As you can see, the rally today, almost to 5,000, 11 hundredths of a point away from hitting 5,000. Uh, I've got this line here. This is the uh, line that this is 4,000. So we first hit 4,000 back over here in uh, April of 2021. So it has been nearly three years since we hit 4,000. Of course, we had a correction in between. Uh, and then before that, the first time we hit um, 3,000 or broke above 3,000 was in July of, of 2019. So less than two years before that so we've gone from you know 3,000 up to 5,000 in just a little bit uh, less than five years well we guess so major milestones and we're not quite there yet now the difference between you know the markets here heading into um, 2,000 or 3,000 the market heading into 4,000 is that we are on a much more significant parabolic move than we ever were in any of those instances you can see the the market sentiment line is nearly above the 90th percentile. In fact, it did briefly get above the 90th percentile, which is a very, very high level for that long-term line. <clears throat> Almost got a cluster today. Uh, we're at the 65th percentile in the momentum line. The other three lines are all above the 80th percentile. Uh, big move up, new highs, 3.5% uh, above the 30-day uh, moving average there. So looking great, except for the one index that continues to not look so great, and that's the Russell 2000. Uh, you take a look at the Russell here and you see it's still got the red line. It does have light green shading because we did turn up slightly, um, but we're still in bearish territory there. The near-term line turned up as well, got into bullish territory itself, but the momentum line barely got there yesterday and fell today back to bearish levels. So unlikely the near-term line is going to make a move. Now, it's not impossible. As you can see, it, it got over here, but over here, that was like the last one. It's not really the greatest uh, for it. You know, for the near-term line to not have the momentum line precede it into the upper reversal zone. Uh, so, so that's the problem we have right now. 
the mar market sentiment still falling and like I said you're still in bearish level so you're still below a falling moving average which is red and you're still below this 23% retracement of this uh, intermediate rally that we've been retracing pretty much since uh, the, the very end beginning of the calendar year here and the end of the last calendar year. So pretty significant moves. Uh, of course, your NASDAQ 100 is the biggest uh, mover to the upside. As you can see, you have um, second here. some of the bigger moves up. Um, I've been in the, these Magnificent 7, and you can see the NASDAQ also crossed back above its market sentiment line, back to the upside, back above the 90th percentile in the intermediate line. Also came close to a cluster, though not as close. The near-term line is also below the 80th percentile, but you can see that you know what's what's the big driver. Uh, this is the big driver of this move. Uh, in fact, uh, we'll take a look at it. Actually, we'll take a look at that in just a second, and we'll take a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average. You know, it's um, bullish still, and you can see the near-term line, momentum line turning back up as well. Again, momentum line's not in the upper reversal zone, so you wouldn't expect. Unless we get another good strong day tomorrow that the near-term line will also make it and stay in that upper reversal zone. Remember, it, this actually did get a cluster. Remember yesterday's move on emerging markets? Uh, it actually held up today pretty well. The near-term line further getting into the upper reversal zone to extreme levels. The intermediate line crossing above the chart's midpoint, almost above market sentiment itself. Uh, so really good opportunities here. Uh, momentum line's down, but that's okay now because you it did get into the reversal zone. Um, so you got dark green shading in the green line for the first time. So you're finally kind of turning things around on a developed market basis, uh, China being the big mover for this. Uh, it did drop today, China did, but still holding up so far uh, with this bear tag. And, and you can see the um, intermediate line rising and the momentum line down to extreme low. So you would expect that we'll bounce back up off of this here tomorrow. Again, uh, one of the big drivers here lately is the dollar. The dollar index producing another bullish intermediate confirmation signal uh, with the intermediate line in the upper reversal zone and the oversold momentum line. This time, though, you have the near-term line in the lower half of the chart now. So you're set up for a bounce back up on the dollar here over the next couple of days. Uh, so we'll kind of keep our eyes on that. Of course, long-term bonds is uh, one of the bigger reasons. Uh, at least yields are one of the bigger reasons why uh, we've been as bullish as we have been. You can see the market uh, forecast is bullish. The intermediate line's rising. You have a dip below the intermediate line with the near-term line. Um, but again, you're coming off of you know what is a weaker intermediate confirmation signal. And we'll see how that plays out, just like the dollar. You would expect that both the dollar and yields here will play out with a short-term bounce back up. That's what that intermediate confirmation signal is. It's like a short-term buy the dip uh, signal. Uh, we'll take a look at Bitcoin here. Also a good move, a kind of a breakout move to the upside today, uh, breaking above all these highs over the last few weeks, near-term line, momentum line taking off, the intermediate line turning back up. Um, so you have a, a, a new run on this. Uh, that's a good move today, a new kind of breakout. So that, that's leading to kind of a reflection of that higher end risk appetite. Remember, this is mostly correlated with uh, the NASDAQ 100 more than, more than the Russell 2000 is. So you can kind of see why those two are kind of moving hand in hand in the same direction. And then finally, crude oil. And you can see crude oil, its near-term line, having had crossed above, or at least gotten really close to crossing yesterday, has now easily crossed above its intermediate line today. A momentum line, again, is kind of lagging. So again, we need to see that momentum line get up a little bit higher. Um, but we'll see if that ends up being the case. This is a strong move nonetheless. And, and like I said, the... Uh, you're back above the rising moving average, so it's green. Uh, you have the dark pink shading because we're falling below the 50th percentile here, and we're slightly into, uh, or at least it looks like we're just barely above the, the uh, bearish territory. Um, but, but as we mentioned with the yields and with the dollar, looking like it's bouncing rather, rather than uh, breaking uh, to the downside here. All right, now let's transition into uh, what's dry, uh, the, the longer term chart, the weekly chart. So now we do have the higher highs. So we've had you know, multiple weeks now of higher highs and higher Hakanyashi closes. That's kind of leading us up here to the upside. Very strong, six and a half percent move on the PPO. Again, you know that's that goes way back here uh, to 2021 to get a higher level than what we're seeing right now. In fact, going over 20 years, uh, you can see we are in the 90th percentile of the last 20 years. So needless to say, 
this is a parabolic move akin to what we saw in 2018 and some of these other moves that we saw uh, when QE3 started in 2013. And then, of course, 2021, which was in this insane inflationary bubble that we had. Um, inflation was taken off, making all the prices of everything rise, including stocks. And, of course, 2011, um, 2010, right before these corrections. Um, and then again, not even the before the uh, great financial crisis were we as high um, then as we are right now. Uh, you have to go back to 2004 before we had a kind of a protracted um, pullback slash correction over there. So needless to say, uh, this is one of our stronger returns uh, that we've had over this last, what, 15 weeks uh, that we've been, 14 out of 15 weeks up to the upside. If we take a look at the three green arrow chart, not surprising to see we have three green arrows across the board, except for the Russell 2000, which continues to have three red arrows. So not even the stochastics has turned green yet. So you still have three red arrows and a red line, no less, on the uh, Russell 2000. So still the uh, outlier there from that regard. Uh, the S&P 500 is above all of its moving averages here that we check. And again, way up above its 200-day moving average. If you take a look at just how far above the price is above its 200-day moving average, you can see it's a significant amount, you know, up to 12% above. Again, about as high as we got over here. Not as high as 2021, if I were to go back five years. Uh, you can see not as high as 2021, but higher above it than we were uh, at the end of 2021 when the correction started. So needless to say, this is a pretty decently high level uh, up above these moving averages, in particular this long-term moving average uh, at that 200-day. And of course, I showed you the 50 and 200 day on the other chart, um, but very, very strong move uh, here for the S&P 500. Let me get back well above the value area of its, um, the one year value area, way up above it. Like we are, the value area is way down to 460, basically down back to that old July high point. So there's not a lot of support between here and 460. So we need to enjoy this ride uh, while we actually have this ride. Uh, IWM is a different story, right? IWM is actually still below uh, some of these moving averages. There we go. It's below the 8 and the 17 day still, um, which are both below the 30 and the 8 below the 17. So you have a negative MACD. Uh, we're just barely hanging on by a thread to the top of the value area on, the, um, on its one year volume profile, as well as that 50 day moving average. So a lot more tenuous situation that you have uh, then you say, then say you have on like the diamonds, which is way up above its 200 day moving average. And this 50 day is way up above too, with a big time divergence developing uh, on there or the Qs, uh, which is not as bad. Like it's, it's barely above its value area. Um, you know, so again, it was more bullish earlier and hasn't been as bullish late. In fact, we've been diverging. The big push was early on last year and we haven't had similar momentum pushes since it's been more of a grind here lately let's take a look at some of these other oscillators the dmi of course still very strong above 35 below 20 so your adx is rising again uh, on there on here of course that's not the case on the russell uh, neither one of them is breaking out yet but at least your positive indicator is still negative um, but we're not really trending yet because your negative indicator hasn't taken off yet to the upside uh, your RSI and your CCI, you're still at, I mean, you're back above 70 again. In fact, on the weekly chart, you're above 73. So this is a very high level, um, very strong on the CCI as well down there. Um, on the daily chart too, back above 150. So pretty high levels, uh, strong bullish levels. Again, not the case for the Russell 2000, but not breaking into bearish levels either. So very similar to the DMI in that regard. Uh, your Ichimoku cloud, again, way up above the cloud. Again, one of your highest, I mean, almost at 16. Um, so, you know, you can see I need to keep moving this as we hit new numbers. And we're not quite at 16 yet either. Um, but you can see here, uh, being at 16, you know, again, very, very few instances. Uh, really only that, that period. This is, a, this is a, a rare parabolic move in and of itself, at least according to that indicator. Um, but of course, a very different story on the Russell, which really has no trend right now. Uh, it is in the cloud. The, the green line is below the blue line, and you have a strong negative rate of change. It's actually getting uh, the negative is actually getting smaller as we approach these closes over here. Uh, so we'll see if we end up falling to stay below those or rising to cross through it uh, to the upside if we get a bullish crossover 
on that rate of change. Uh, if you look at the Bollinger Band width, of course, you are still on the S&P above the Kel way above the Keltner Channel, not above the upper band. It's kind of hard to get above the upper band uh, when you're, you know, when you're trending as bullish as this is. This is not a log scale, uh, arithmetic scale. This is a log scale that just goes to show just how strong that move is. Strong momentum still, very long run of bullish momentum here with only a brief little convergence period in between. Again, similar to what we saw over here uh, last summer going into that correction. Uh, just not the same length, but same similar pattern. And then again, we are still in the upper quartile. So we're still pretty bullish and a relatively high bandwidth, relatively high bandwidth uh, to what we've seen in the past. Uh, let's take a look at the intraday moves, a new high point, which means you're back to 100 on the green line. And you're more than likely going to keep pushing. We're not going to get a new low point in the next five days. So this is going to keep pushing over here, uh, which means our green red line is going to get back to zero uh, again. Um, that's not the case for the Russell. Uh, the Russell doesn't have a new high or a new low. Uh, and you did get a one touch on the new highs, which is pretty bearish. Uh, and you're a lot closer to a new four-week low point there. And again, it's going to move up to here in just a matter of days as well. So a lot more uh, closer pattern and also a much smaller bandwidth uh, or the price channel, excuse me, over the last four weeks relative to where it's been uh, than the S&P. So the S&P had also dropped, uh, but has been actually gaining size over the last so many weeks, a uh, few weeks, whereas the Russell has been getting smaller and smaller. Uh, taking a look at today's volume and trading range, not surprising to see it was pretty small. You did have an opening gap that will most likely fill in sooner than later on the S&P. But back, you know, still below average, still um, below average on the range. Uh, if you, in fact, if you look at the weekly range uh, for this, so you know we're well below one percent, so very, very low levels on the ranges there. So kind of matching the VIX. So a lot of people say the VIX is so low because it's broken and it doesn't really matter anymore. Well, it's not just the VIX that's low; the ranges are really low too. So, so it, it you know, there is a high level of complacency. In fact, the weekly. Um, normalized ATR here is almost down to two percent, uh, which again is about as low as it got before the last two corrections, the COVID correction and the um, this correction here. So it's it's pretty darn low as well. Uh, and then of course the VIX is low, right? The VIX continues to be really low. The VIX uh, jumped back up above 80, but the VIX itself dropped below 13, so a little bit of a decline in that correlation. Uh, and it's still above the 85th percentile. It's the 80th percent, 80th percent mark here where it gets extreme so we're not too extreme here um, but when you look at um when you look at it you know relative to its averages you know you are below the you know every single average here the macd itself has gone next to so the eights below the 17 they're both still above the 30 they have been for a while so we'll see more than likely as we saw yesterday with that vvix below 80 more than likely that precedes a jump in volatility um just because we didn't get it today doesn't mean that it's not do it. So in fact, if you look at the seasonality for volatility, um, this is a time of year where we actually do get a jump in volatility. And it might wait until the 15th, which is the the end of the next expiration cycle, right next Friday or next Thursday. Um, but you can see between middle of February to middle of March, we tend to get a jump in volatility. And so, and, and it seems to be following that pattern here, especially with the VVIX as low as it is, you know, and the range of the bit volatility as low as it is, we're setting ourselves up for um, a pretty j decent size range uh, in volatility over in an expiration cycle, which obviously would be the next one, considering we're about to end this one uh, in the next week. And I highly doubt we'll get a big move in volatility between now and then. All right, now let's take a look at what's driving uh, this price action here today. Again, very you know relatively small move, so not really a major uh, move here. But if you take a look at February the seventh, uh, we'll, we'll just go to a five-minute chart. Again, the queues continue to be the outperformer. They have been over the last few days, really since the jobs report came out on Friday. You can see it's been a big move higher in the queues, uh, but not anything else, right? The Russell 2000 is actually down over these four days. The Qs are higher. Emerging markets made that big jump yesterday and held those gains. So they're up and the dollar continues to be up. Commodities continue to outperform other um, uh, equity asset classes there or uh, other asset classes just in general. And then bonds continue to be the weakest performer. So really that's the biggest, I mean, that's the biggest move over the last, the reason why we're jumping to 5,000 is because the Qs are leading us there uh, as we are in this, and, and, you know, despite this environment of a rising dollar, rising yields and a 
outperforming commodity uh, cycle here. So it's really just a QQQ story, continues to be a QQQ story. In fact, if you look at the ratio chart, the ratio chart here, uh, you'll notice uh, that we are back up to a high level, right? The, in fact, you know, the what the third highest level that we've seen, we close at 223, 2.236. Over here was 2.232. So it's the second highest level, the highest being this 2.24. So second highest level, at, you know, in 20 plus years, going all the way back to the tech bubble, that it's been this high, the 30 day, Average of the ratio is actually crossing back above the 50 day now. That's how bullish it is. The 8 and 17 are well above the 30. Uh, you can see the momentum is still diverging. Uh, we don't have a new high point there, uh, it, nor on the CCI, nor on the RSI. Uh, and remember, the DMI being above 45 is a big deal. This is a pretty, it's a pretty high level, to say the least, um, even in the short term for uh, this ratio, for the Q is relative. And again, you think, okay, well, Maybe XLY is really killing XLP, which is another good ratio for risk appetite. And that's not the case. Today, finally had to move up to the 30 day, but it's been pretty bearish. Um, you can see uh, the stocks have been, you know, the correlation is turning slightly positive to, to potentially negative here because as the ratio has been dropping, the market's been rising. That's not normal. Of course, when you look at the weekly version, you'll see it's not normal because the, the long-term ratio of this um, the long-term correlation is strongly positive, so it's not normal for it to be as you know getting you know as negative as it's been multiple times here. Um, but uh, again, still below its 50-day average despite today's rally, uh, with a falling PPO and then you know all these indicators rising, uh, but not to bullish levels yet. Just basically rising off of oversold levels so far, right? So far there. Uh, you're also seeing a move. Again, we're, you know, a good jump yesterday, kind of held today, the number of stocks above the 50-day moving average uh, versus the number of stocks above their 200-day, though you see both lines are below their moving averages despite this ra strong rally we've had in the S&P. That's not normal, nor is it normal for the S&P to be as bullish as it is with this ratio of the number of stocks above the 200 relative to the number of stocks above the 50-day uh, moving averages, um, not only above its moving average, but also back above one. Right, so we're, we're just really moving higher, of course. That's reflecting itself in a very high skew. It continues to trade above 150. It closed down from 160. Had a couple of days of 160, but still above 150 is a very high mark uh, for this. Now, as you can see in 2021, you can stay above 150 for quite a while uh, before things really get sketchy. But this, this is a high mark. This basically means there's a high level of Despite the very extremely low level of complacency in the next 30 days, there's a high level of risk um, for fat tail risk, for bigger moves uh, than expected um, in a short amount of time. And that's kind of what the skew is representing there. So the, the, the breadth just hasn't been very positive. You're, this has been updated with the New York Stock Exchange. It hasn't been updated yet with the NASDAQ Composite. Uh, you're up to 282. I'm going to venture to guess. It'll probably come back down below 200. Um, by the time it's fully updated and and the reason why i expect that is because our breadth still continues to be very poor it's still negative here on the oscillator four days in a row even though we've been up three of these four days four days in a row we've been negative to the point now we're almost you know, approaching this 500 level uh, and almost breaching the 500 level which again you typically do during pullbacks not during moves to an all-time highs uh, so interesting development there. You also see that kind of reflected in the money flow index, which is above 80 again, not just on the daily. It's really above 80. It's above 90 on the weekly. So very, very high level of money flow uh, extreme in the weekly basis here. It's gotten way up to an extreme and it's on a daily basis too. Again, it's barely, we're actually barely above uh, this peak in money flow, even though price is well above uh, over there. And if I were to go all the way back, if you recall, um, again, the peak over here, the peak in the money flow was, uh, was over in this area, and we're nowhere near that level uh, currently. So even though we are well above those highs, and that's a reflection, again, of what we're seeing kind of broadly, right? The Russell 2000 is also nowhere near its highs, and hence why, um, you know, the S&P can't quite follow through because it's, you know, again, it's, a small handful. I mean, I know people say it's not a handful of stocks, but it, it still really is 
Um, but the problem is those small handful of stocks are starting to rotate out of favor. So if I were to go to uh, Apple and go to all 10, so we'll include Netflix, Adobe, and, and Broadcom in this top 10 as well, um, you can see they're pretty much all moving down to the left. There's a couple, um, let's see, Meta and Amazon are the two that are moving up to the right. Everything else is moving down. Uh, and if not to the left, kind of slightly to the left. Apple, you can see, and NVIDIA. NVIDIA is kind of moving slightly to the right, but still a lot big loss of momentum over the past two weeks and across most of these, except for really Tesla, which has got very significant, um, you know, it's the worst relative strength. In fact, your three worst relative strengths are Apple, Google, and Tesla. Uh, and then Tesla, Google, and almost Apple also have the worst momentum out of this group. Whereas, you know, again, Netflix and Meta and Amazon have your three highest momentums right now. Meta losing its momentum, but from a high, much higher level than everything else. Uh, and then your best relative strengths are Meta, NVIDIA, and Netflix, right? Those are your three top relative strengths. But if you look at, now go to look at the um, the, the sectors and you can it's not surprising to see XLK and XLC moving down to the left and XLU, XLRE, XLI uh, and in energy, um, industrials, utilities. Uh, let's see here, this would be energy over there um, and then staples, industrials, financials, uh, materials. There's materials there. So you have some cyclical names including discretionary moving up to the left but you also have Healthcare, staples, real estate, and utilities also moving up to the right, excuse me. Uh, which so we're getting a little bit of a move, a shift away. See, when this whole started, when this whole thing started here, let's go out uh, the four weeks. And so we'll fit that. So when this whole thing started, you see it started with uh, a move into, so there's your safety trade, utility, and staples. But you can see now technology, um, discretionary moving up. Uh, and as we continue higher, some other cyclical names, industrials, uh, financials, real estate, uh, uh, materials, discretionary also going there too. And then a new wave higher with, uh, there's healthcare, um, but you can also see uh, con um, communication services, technology moving up to the right uh, on this second wave higher. And now we're rotating back into away from those areas and back into some of these other cyclical areas but this time including a lot of the safety areas as well, uh, utilities and real estate. And so those are some names to kind of keep an eye on. We, we kind of watch the XLK here um, as, a, as a proxy for the broader, for really this, this, this trade, this Magnificent Seven trade. Uh, it only really has three of them, but it has three of the big ones. Um, and you can see that it's still above its 50 day average on a relative strength basis, but look at the the loss in momentum and relative strength. And then when you look at XLC, this is on a weekly chart, or this is on a daily chart, sorry. Uh, you can see it's also losing momentum and potentially peaking in its relative strength and rolling over. So we'll see if that plays out to uh, a rotation out of these strong stocks that have been leading the market higher to uh, other stock safety stocks as the market potentially goes through that seasonal bout of volatility here. Um, let's see here. We'll take a look at Las Vegas Sands. Uh, Las Vegas Sands is looking really good here on a daily basis, kind of breaking out here, going into its earnings tonight for um, Wynn Resorts. That already had its earnings. The market kind of liked it, kind of got re kind of restarted this bullishness, uh, and now it's up in the after hours here uh, with Wynn Resorts reporting. Of course, we already put the trade on during the Market Outlook Live video at 3:30 Eastern Time. Uh, the intermediate line is up in the upper reversal zone, so is the near term line. The momentum line had already gotten there up to extreme, uh, up above that 90th percentile. So that's all really good. Uh, what's even better is a lot of these weekly charts are just turning bullish. We just got the bear tag. We followed through with a good strong week this week. The near term line rising up. The intermediate line almost out of bearish territory, so it's got some room to get going here. Uh, you can see we just barely got a bullish candle on the weekly chart and close above the 40 week exponential moving average for the first time, um, which suggests that, there's, that we could get a golden cross here that could lead to an extended bullish run for a while. Obviously, you have three green arrows on the chart. Uh, if you take a look, you're breaking, almost breaking up above that 200-day moving average, so really important level, very strong MACD and stochastic indicators there. Um, looking at the DMI, 
uh, you see that we are above 35, well below 20, so a good breakout on the daily and, and a good crossover so far, um, beginning crossover on the weekly version. The RSI and the CCI are also turning higher to bullish levels on the daily, very good bullish levels on the daily, with the weekly just starting to get going, right? Uh, up above 50 uh, and then you know very strongly above 100 on the weekly chart on the CCI. Uh, looking at the Ichimoku cloud, uh, we are well above the cloud, very strong positive rate of change. The beginning stages of a weak uh, bullish trend right there. So we're just starting uh, a trend there um, on the uh, Bollinger Band. We close above the Bollinger Band and the up, upper Keltner Channel. We actually ended up closing a little bit below the Keltner Channel by the end of the day. Uh, but you have increasing bullish momentum. You don't have the green dots yet. Probably going to take another day or two maybe to get that. We're moving into towards the top of the value area where there's not as much volume here in the middle. So we have a very easy run to go through until uh, we meet some more resistance up here to the upside. Uh, so I like this setup and I like that long because a lot of those weekly charts, in fact, if you look at the weekly version of this, again, the very low bandwidth on a weekly basis crossing into the upper quartile for the first time. Um, and you can see what it looks like here. Momentum just starting on the weekly basis. So it looks like we're kind of just getting going. So I decided to go out to the longer end of the range of the 50 to 150 day range. I'm buying the June contract, buying at the money with a 50% stop. Um, and it's going to let this thing run and see how long it goes up. A good two to one reward to risk ratio or more if it ends up um, getting to that, if it ends up making a one standard deviation move, which would be up around that 62 level. So it'd be kind of back towards these highs which is, you know, back up into this area, which would be very feasible, right? Very likely um, that that kind of move can, can happen, as we said, because we're just starting to turn higher on a lot of those long-term weekly uh, indicators there. All right, well, that is it for today. You've heard from me now, and I want to hear from you. Use that link popping out in the top right corner of your screen. That takes you to our Market Outlook forum. Open up any new thread with any questions or comments you have. Reply to anybody else's thread, and let's keep this conversation going in between videos. Again, thank you very much for watching. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit that thumbs up icon. Comment on the video. Uh, join us at marketscholars.com for free. Follow and like us on Twitter and Facebook as well. Have a great rest of your Wednesday night, everybody, and we'll see you all next time.